Hello and welcome to the Digital Global Media Forum. Today, we're speaking to Dutch political scientist Kaas Mudde, whose work focuses on political extremism and populism in Europe as well as the United States. Welcome, Professor Mudde. Thank you. So in order to start a discussion about populism, pluralism and journalism, let's start by defining what is pluralism? Well, pluralism is the view that society exists of different groups which have different ideas and different interests. Now, pluralism is an essential part of liberal democracy, our political system, which combines majority rule with minority rights. And so in liberal democracy, we know that there are different groups and that even if the majority wants to do certain things, it still has to accept certain minority rights. And in contrast to pluralism, what qualifies as populism? Well, populism sees society as essentially divided into two and homogenous and antagonistic groups. On the one hand, the pure people, and on the other hand, the corrupt elite. And it believes that populism should follow what it believes to be the general will of the people. And so importantly, populism is monist, which means it only sees one group as a legitimate group. And it believes that all the people have the same interest and the same ideas. Now, most populist actors combine populism with an other ideology, which I call the so-called host ideology. And on the left, most often this host ideology is socialism. And on the right, this is mostly nativism, a xenophobic form of nationalism. And if we think about left-wing populists, we think, for example, about President Maduro in Venezuela or AMLO in Mexico or Podemos and Syriza in Europe. Whereas on the right, we think about Bolsonaro or Trump or Marine Le Pen and Matteo Salvini. So these two concepts appear to be opposites. There is a, a field of tension between the two of them. Is there a threat to pluralism posed by populism amid this field of tension? Yes, yeah, so in, in theory, Populism is monist, which is the opposite of pluralism. For, for populists, any, any group that is not part of the pure people, which are considered to be all the people, all the legitimate people, which all share the same values and same, in, same interests, those people are not legitimate, which means that they don't deserve protection. Now, in practice, what we see is that populist governments undermine, or, or populist actors, undermine um, <clears throat> some of the foundations of liberal democracy. For example, what you see in Poland or in Hungary today is that the independent media and the independent judiciary are being undermined. But you even see it in the rhetoric of people going back to Silvio Berlusconi in Italy, who spoke about the red robes discrediting judges as if they were part of the Communist Party or the, the former socialists. And you see it, of course, with Donald Trump. He speaks about the, the media as the enemy of the people. And talking about the media, where does all that leave journalism? Some people argue that the media should be neutral. But I think that's an illusion because there's always bias. There's bias in how you report stories, but there's also bias in what you select as being the news. And so if you report neutrally on something, you by and large support the status quo, which is a political position. So a more realistic position is that media should be independent. And by independent, we too often think only about independent of a specific political party. But true independence of the media would also mean independent of economic interests. Now, if the media want to be either independent or the watchdog of democracy, they have to be critical towards populism. Because populism doesn't accept an independent media and undermines liberal democracy. Now, when I say that the media should be critical, I don't think it should be blind to potentially positive aspects of populism. So sometimes populists actually uncover corruption or put issues on the agenda that other parties have kept out, but that part of the population find important. But I do think that it's important to keep in mind and to always contextualize that populists 
undermine the liberal democratic system that we uphold. And in that sense, a neutral position is self-defeating for the essence of the media because it would lead to undermining the independence of the media. So finally, how do we best accomplish that? How do we best support independent media globally? Yeah, and that's a very difficult one because the media can only do part of it. Media needs money. And for that, traditionally, most of the media in, in Europe, at least, got its money either from the state or from actually political parties, churches, or, or trade unions, which meant they weren't fully independent. Today, most media get their money through advertisement, which means that they're dependent upon who reads them. And the problem is many people prefer to read sensationalist and scandalous stories, which works to the advantage of populists who emphasize scandals and sensationalism um, and who are part of that narrative. And so while I do believe that the media should not provide disproportionate attention to them, to the populist, I also think there is a role for the viewers and the readers who should not go for the clickbait of every story about Donald Trump, because as long as people read it, media are going to print it. Thank you very much, Professor Kasmutter, for joining us for the Digital Global Media Forum. We sincerely hope that next year in 2021, we Thank can you. welcome you in Bonn, Germany for the Global Media Forum 2021. Until then, please stay healthy, stay safe and take care.